In 1999, the United States was quietly being taken over by Great Britain. Full Colin Russell, hyphen J, Full Colin Gould, along with his witness and corporate partner, Full Colin David, hyphen Wynn, Full Colin Miller, stepped in to thwart the attempted surrender that would have turned the United States back over into the hands of Great Britain. In the year of 2018, July 21st, the summer solstice, Full Colin David, hyphen Wynn, Full Colin Miller passed away. Find out what effect this has had on the world, and why is all of this so important. For this ceremony, public funeral performance treaty of this Leggett document contract federal postal service federal court venue performance trial and memory publications is with this performance of this public ceremony with the giving grammar closure, covery and livery, joy and happiness and helping of mankind with life, the life's journey of the passing of the volition David hyphen Wynn Colin Miller out of the vessel David hyphen Wynn Colin Miller's last full day and night the 21st of, 21st of June 2018 summer solstice and the passing date June 22nd 2018 with the planet earth of the now time and space with this eulogy within this public funeral ceremony. David hyphen Wynn Colin Miller was born on September 17th 1949. He was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. His parents, who I had the unbelievable honor to spend six months of my life and live with them, they were uh, Winford hyphen A colon Miller and mother Lavina hyphen C colon Miller. I'd like to start here for this is where as a friend I learned a lot about David. You can learn a lot about people by their parents. And I was given the, the chance in 2003, 2004, um, to live with Dave's parents for six months and study under them. He thought it was relevant to study under them. What I mean by that is David li lived in, in a world where um, his parents taught him a lot of value. They had grit. His mom had tremendous grit. She was a, uh, the head of the... Um, um, Eastern Star Organization for the chapter of the Wisconsin Charter. Um, she had, uh, which is an Andragogian teachings, which taught Andragogian teachings of, of self and, and, and of giving. And she was a very kind person, but boy, she was just flat out tough. And she was loving. Uh, when I was there, uh, Winford, his dad, who was also a member of the Freemason Society of Wisconsin. He, he was on his elderly stages in life. And the love and care that Levina, Dave's mother, gave for her husband to his very end was something that I would like my children to do for me. I would like my wife to do for me. If she was, she, you can see where Dave just got his grit and toughness. Winford would uh, go through strokes and he was a much larger man, and she would struggle, and she would lift him up, and carry him into the beds, and carry him into, and, and I, she would tell me about how much she loved David, and, and how much she loved her, her other children. Her, the, her other children were um, Douglas, Richard, Janet, and Jan, Jason, Zell, Jason hyphen, Brian Cohen Zelmer's mother. Um, I never got to meet most of the siblings of, of David, but I, I was bl blessed to meet Janet. Uh, and she was a very nice lady, um, but I, she wasn't in the program. And, and David's children uh, chose uh, not to live in the quantum world. Uh, we we dealt, developed a treaty here that we'll get in on the business side. I don't want to address that right now. I just want to talk about what I saw from David's family. Um, they were very supportive. His mom and dad were of David. Um, they taught him tremendous work ethic. His, his dad owned a, a soda pop business, a water business, uh, and he, they worked every morning. They were, they were up working at, at early hours, and, and he had just tremendous work drive. And I, I, I saw that in his family. I saw that in his, his mom, and I saw that in his dad. Even though they were at their older stages, they would tell me the stories. And uh, they sat down with me with, the, with their studies of their... Um, the reason why I was there was the studies of their masonry and their studies of the, of the um, Eastern Star. Uh, they wanted to train me in that, and so they broke out a covenant 
to train me in, in, their, in their ways. So um, that's a little bit about Dave's family life. I've, he, he grew up on a farm in Indiana. Uh, and then he was in the water business. He had a, a tremendous amount of uh, college hours. He had over 500 hours of college. He taught at a welding tech school. Uh, I, I personally went to A.L. Smith uh, with him, and this is where David actually became the first whistleblowing, uh, bl whistleblower of his life. And uh, David would develop the polymer technology of plastics and welding. He developed the math behind that. Very bright guy. And he owned the copyrights and the patents on that. And he found in the trailers that he, they were building for A.L. Smith, he found a deficiency in one of the welds. And it was causing the axles to fall off the trailers as they were driving down the highway. David, this was his first act of whistleblowing, he actually stopped and corrected. And they fired him for it because he discovered the math behind the, 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 how the weld would break. He was very bright. Um, I, I got to go to A.L. Smith with, with him on his pension because he sued. A.L. Smith, of course, he was way back then in, in the 80s and 90s. We, we weren't too big on the prepositional phrases. We were learning about it, but we didn't have now space. We didn't, we didn't have a lot of the mechanics that we, we later put in. Uh, but this was David's first whistleblower's function. Uh, in 2004, um, I went to A.L. Smith in Michigan with David to the headquarters, and he wanted to take me as a witness because he was trying to get his pension out of them because they, they were so mad at him for being a whistleblower, and it caused their stock in that company to, to go down. It was a public traded company, and, and lo and behold, the company BK'd over his lawsuits because he made such a stink of it, and they withheld his pensions. So he, he ended up getting the pensions back from them. They switched to a different company. And uh, he, we went in to spoke with the, uh, the shareholders of the company. And uh, I got to sit in on those meetings uh, on his private side. Uh, this was, you know, he was doing the grammar at that time in 2004. But um, I learned a lot about David. He was, a, he was, he was very bright and very uh, astute welder. He, he taught at a technical college, welding. He taught classes. And he had over 500 uh, credit hours in college credits throughout his life. So he had uh, five children. Uh, his children, I've got to spend time with some of them. Uh, uh, his, his, his eldest son, Mark, I just met him one time. Um, his, his daughter, Mary, uh, his daughter, Mary, I spent many times with Mary. She, she was very kind to me. I, I wish them the, nothing but the best. Um, his, his daughter, uh, Katie, spent a lot of time with Katie. She was at the house all the time when I was over there. Uh, she was she was full of vigor that one, and the other one was Laura, and I never got the chance to meet Laura. And uh, I got to go fishing with Polly, and he looked a, a lot like David, a lot like David. So, and I, I met his his wife Jan of Polly and, and Katie. Uh, I got to spend time with him and, and his grandchildren. So, this is a little bit about what what I saw in Dave, and and the honor and the privilege that I had to interact with his family and and his loved ones. Um, he loved his granddaughter, Ariana. He, he was crazy about Ariana. Um, I remember going to Chuck E. Cheese with Ariana for her birthday. And, you know, when Grandpa walked in the door, man, she just stuck with all of her friends, ran up, Grandpa, 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 gave him a big old hug. And, uh, you know, it, I want to be a grandpa like that. You know, everybody should strive to be a grandpa like that because, man, she just loved, Ariana loved her grandpa. Anyway, uh, this is a little slideshow. I, I, I apologize. I'm, I am in a lot of the things because we were together a lot. So um, from uh, 90, 97 to, uh, you know, to 2005 or 2004 and uh, on and off after 2004. But uh, this is a little slide presentation ab about David, um, things that people just haven't seen, some of the experiences and places. Uh, you'll see uh, David and I in Hawaii uh, with many different people. Um, you'll see us in, um, at the Vatican over in, in Italy. You'll see us in Switzerland in the snow, France, South France. Uh, just, just a different, and fishing. Uh, David and I, uh, and uh, we had a shareholder at the time, uh, an honorable man who, who lived up to his capacity within the corporate structure, uh, Gordon Hyphen, James Colin Gunch, until he could not, which uh, 
uh, we had uh, contracts in place, and we'll, we'll get into the contractual side, but uh, we'd go fishing every year uh, for nine, ten years, and it was absolutely some of the best times of my life with David. Uh, anyway, uh, we should push play on this. Sure. Yes. No. Yeah. That's, is there, yeah. I have really nothing else to say about my friendship side for David because uh, he was there for me and then when he wasn't there, he wasn't there. And what I mean by that is uh, when I took down the U.S. Supreme Court, I called him on the phone. I says, uh, you coming? He says, you know, Russell, if you want to play the, with the big dogs, you got to be able to get off the porch. I says, got it. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. You stay on the porch. And uh, past, I remember that was the real day that I felt like I could manage what I was, what we had created. That was really the the first time that I was like, because they came in to try to arrest me, and you know, I did the correct things and, and walked out of there as chief judge. So, anyway, that's my pictures of, of David from the private side, and I'm just honored to share it with you, and uh, honest to share. You know about about this man, David Eiffelwinkel and Miller, and the and the, and the legacy that he, he he left for us all, and how to use that legacy for for a performance in our lives. And it's it's a double-edged sword when you when we get into things here, and we look at the verb of thinking. So anyway, that's the part right there. So. With that being said, we're going to kind of jump over into the business side and the constructs that have been put in place for all of you to use. Um, July 12, 2000, we knew that the bankruptcy had ended and we knew that they were going to have to vacate and disqualify the United States and vacate the District of Columbia being the federal government. Uh, so the birth certificates were, the system was over, the U.S. Treasury was over. And the U.S. Postal Service was over. So I filed a job application form in as postal hyphen in hyphen inspector. And the post office did a unique thing. They put their label on top of my, uh, on top of my claim, and I autographed the label. Labels are classified as tickets. Tickets are classified as stamps. And I became the postmaster of the United States Postal Service in Washington, D.C. I then figured out a way to just setting up the, 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 the foundation of um, what, what we set up for all of you to use as tenants the, through the postal system. I then uh, figured out a way to order the, the, the court system open, the U.S. judicial system open. I ordered the, uh, the courts open uh, against the Internal Revenue Service in April of, of 2001. And um, got, a, got a judgment. It's the only one like it of its kind where the clerk of courts autographed in the United States District Courts auto, autographed the, um, the same line as me and came and joined her. Uh, when I did that, David flew out to, to my house immediately. And he says, well, how'd you do that? And I explained it to him. So he immediately went out to Hawaii and ordered the courts open in Hawaii. And that's what facilitated that was uh, the knowledge that I gave him to order the courts open. And we started ordering courthouses open all over, the, all over our country. So what we did is we, we've, we had this judgment, or I had this judgment, and I had been studying on the postal system and how to bank judgments. And we started looking at a concept called savings, clause, savings accounts, but we call them savings hyphen clause hyphen claims, or because we don't do accounts, because when you start a word with a vowel followed by a double consonant, it means no. And we took my judgment. I went back into court because I had to, on June 8th of that year, just to close the case, because I'd, I'd been filing my summary judgments and getting the clerk to join. And so I, I walked out of there, and within the 45-day trust moratorium, which means I didn't vacate the estate, uh, which is very similar to what I'm doing here. David passed on the 22nd. 
his la of um, June, but I'm within the 40, on the 45th day here of within the timeline when he passed. So I'm giving closure to the world that I'm not breaking the continuance of the evidence, that I'm the only person within our corporate st structure under survivorship to articulate and give closure to the world of what we've set up. So I'm fulfilling my duty with David Hyphen Winkle and Miller and the Honorable Gordon Hyphen James Colin Gunch, who vacated and did not live up to the standards of the criteria that you're going to learn here today. When he vacated, the shares went over to David and I, and then when David passed, it went over to, to me, and we'll get into that and how this was set up. So we set up our, with, we took the summary judgments of my case, and we, we created our own country. And here's a copy for those who, you know, I'm gonna leave this up here for you guys to come look, you know, the forensics, and we'll, we can put it up online uh, so that the people can see what was set up. It was done for, under the copyrights of Title IV, Sections 1, 2, and 3, the flag, and under the v Vienna Convention, Article 11, Vienna Convention, Article 26. Title 46, Bills of the Ladings, which we don't teach anymore, but is a foundational point that people can go cross-reference for reference points on looking at Bills of the Lading, which is Title 46, Sections 190, 191, 192, 193, and 194. As well as Title 46, Shipping for Transportation, 14706, oh, my bad, Title 49, sorry, 14706. And we established our country. And let me tell you about this story. This was an amazing thing. So I'm telling David, we're sitting around the campfire because we went camping. This was one of the pictures you saw, one of the memories. We, were, we went camping. We're out on the Grovant. And uh, Mark Colin Martin out of Alaska was with us. Jack. Colin Haney out of Casper, Wyoming was, was with us, myself, Gordon, and, and uh, David. And I'm putting this contract together, explaining to David and Gordon what I'm gonna do with my judgment, because no one had ever got a judgment and knew what to do with it, right? So I'm like, I'm gonna start my own country with the judgment and make sure that the IRS can't come into my country, number one, because they're, they're a non-issue because they were kicked out of the United States in 1999. So as I'm explaining to David at the campfire, I'm not kidding you, a line of ants, red ants, marched through at the end of my feet. I mean, a long, large ants, probably 15 feet long, about three inches in diameter, marched through the camp. And Dave's like, that's odd. He goes, red ants are marching today. I'm like, okay. So Dave follows them. You know, he can't, we're sitting around having a few beers, fishing on a river in the Grovant, and he follows it to this black ant hill. And these ants put on a war like you can't believe, and they capture the queen of the black ants. And they put her up on her shoulders, and they march right past me again on the way out. Dave goes, there's a lot of symbology to the frequency of that happening right here. He goes, what are you setting up? And so I'm explaining to him about how I'm going to set up and disqualify the Universal Postal Union and take over the Universal Postal Union for all shipping lanes on the planet, and all, which covers all banks, all military, because these are postal wars and postal commerce that, that's being established here. And Dave's like, man, I'm on, I'm on board with that one. So we, we jumped on board, and, and we, we also set, used uh, a lot of Title 39 sites here as well. Uh, dealing with uh, collections of mails and uh, put the judgment in there and and we kicked off our country called we called it at the time at the time because we were still using um, the technology under grandfathering I'm okay on this but on the time it was uh, the universal hyphen postal hyphen union because we didn't know any better to take it to the global we you have to understand this you guys are seeing uh, a thought process to always stop and correct and then you have to look at the volition of why it was stopping and correcting and then why it wasn't, which we'll get into a little further down the line here. So we established our, our country and we, and we filed it in, and there's Gordon's claim of the life at the time. We filed it in with, the, at the time it was George Walker Bush, 
we file it in here's the shipping lanes on all that and you guys can come look at this if you would like the ones that are here uh, Bush George Ivan Walker Colin Bush uh, Department of Defense uh, the postmaster uh, that they claimed was the postmaster general at the time William Henderson part of the description is here is me as the postmaster general the International Court at The Hague the Postal Union in Switzerland uh, the Pentagon Army Navy Air Force Marines and these are the, just the bills of the ladings on all that. You're more than welcome to come look at that. And, and that's, that's a foundation. That was our first share. We set it up under a shareholders meeting. That was our first shareholders meeting on what you all are, are get to use today. So I'm just kind of uh, giving you a little background to, to, to set. Uh, we, and then from year after year, we, we held an annual shareholders meeting at that point. Um, the paperwork that you are all looking at to come here is the, uh, which we're going to look at, which is the, um, um, I'm just setting up a foundation so we can look at this paperwork because that way you guys comprehend why this paperwork was put into place, what the background is, and because I'm within the 45 day trust moratorium of in passing, the rules of the continuance of the evidence which under 12B1 must be maintained at all time, which gives me tactical command control of the construct. So the, in this uh, first, in one of our shareholders meetings, and we're gonna discuss this one first, and this one is In fact, I'd like to put this up on the board so, or uh, on the uh, screen, so if we can pause for a second. So the first document and one of, one of the shareholder meetings, we, we had many shareholder meetings, uh, but one of the major ones we had is uh, the, the one with, with the ants, uh, not the ants, that was the first one, but the one, one of the ones after the ants. And this was uh, a levy treaty, which is, is which gives me the right that the levy is right now, is the performance right now, uh, to uh, give closure uh, on, and it, we, we, we took certain documents out of here because they weren't relevant. And you can see Dave autographed the stamp up top here. What am I doing over there? Dave autographed the stamp up top here. I'm gonna blow this up a little bit bigger so you guys can read it simultaneously. So I'm gonna blow this up a little bit bigger, but uh, um, here's Dave's autographs, here's my autograph, here's Gordon's autograph. We all thumbprinted this and, and, and put this into play. It was under uh, mail number RR0239668088 US. So I'm going to blow this up a little bit so you guys can re read this simultaneously. There we go. Can you guys see that? Pretty good? Barely. Barely? Do I need. I'll blow it up even more and scroll down. Oh, uh, maybe. Ah, that's as big as I can get it, guys. I do apologize. Anyway, it's it's the it's it, it, on the contract for this for this publication and this trial. Uh, this is the uh, uh, shareholders meeting uh, for the generation virilities. So. When we looked at this construct of setting up this postal union, we knew we had to make it last, right? So uh, we, we, we studied ourselves and trained ourselves in what's called fiefment, which, the, which is the, the, the capacity to transport and tra pass on corporal hereditaments, being the corporation of what we set up, and the tenets and, and the heritage behind that. And so that's what this, this document was designed for. Yeah, we came in as a uh, uh, freeholders, fief mentors, key masters. I was also the treasurer on the original contract of the uh, original shareholders meeting. Um, I was elected by the shareholders of the corporation to be the treasurer of the quantum banking system because I had t st been studying and I had a lot more to learn 
Uh, but I, I had the, the drive to study the, the mechanics of tr being a treasurer and camera listic and, and other things at a later date. Anyway, and th this is our uh, Board of Governors meeting, shareholders meeting, and, the, and these are our minutes. These are the actual the minutes that occurred on, on the fishing trips that we would go to on a yearly basis. So uh, I'm, I'm here as a uh, claimant, postmaster, letter carrier, f Global Postal Union freeholder, Global Postal Union f thief mentor, which means I can pass on the, the hereditaments. Global Postal Union owner, a muster master, because I was muster master with the US Navy. Um, a um, treasurer, a comptroller of the global currency. A World Port Quay owner, which means I owned all, all ports on planet Earth in a now time scenario, because I, I knew the mechanics of what that meant on the grammar. So I own all the ports and all the banks and all the buildings. And at a later date, I'd come out with the periodic table to take control of the molecular structure, as well as a monoatomic treaty to take care of the monos as well. Um, uh, bank banker, judge, global monetary fund owner, world central bank owner, postal hyphen in hyphen inspector, postmaster general, and global postmaster general, Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould. David hyphen Wink Cola Miller came in as a claimant, a postmaster, a letter carrier, a global postal union freeholder, a global postal union fief mentor, a global postal union owner. He was a joint owner here. He was a muster master as well, a key master, a world port quay owner, a bank banker judge, a global monetary fund owner, a sovereign world central bank owner. He was a postal hyphen in hyphen inspector, and he was the copyright holder of what we called in the time at in the truth. Now we tell it. Uh, in the correct communication part of syntax grammar. Uh, quantum communications. Notice here he's not a postmaster general. Okay, so you guys are you're seeing foundational things where games were played later, not on my part, but we'll look at that at a l later on today. So notice here he, he's nowhere to be found in here as a postmaster general because it came with specific criteria that he had not have the creden did not have the credentialing for. That's what I had set up in the original shareholders meeting. And then we had Gordon Knife and James Colin Gunch. He was a witness to all this. He was a claimant as well. He was a postmaster. He was a letter carrier. He was a Global Postal Union fief mentor. He was a Global Postal Union uh, freeholder. He was a Global Postal Union owner. He was a bank banker as well. He was a postal hyphen in hyphen inspector. In fact, we have his postal hyphen in hyphen inspector app in the original construct. And uh, hereafter, uh, we're just Global Postal Union owners, Gordon Miller and Russell, with, the, with this vessel. We had a, let's see if it'll scroll. I may have to scroll down, and I do apologize, guys. Um, we had, uh, in the next paragraph, we had the name of our, sh of our vessel, and we were christening it. We could always christen our vessels. When we file contracts, we, we christen the vessel. Right? So we put it, at, put it, in, put it into shipping lanes. Uh, so we're, we're looking at the mechanics of maritime movements on vessels. We were very heavily back into the study of nautical, nautical movement on vessels back in, back in those days. Okay, we've, we haven't been teaching those methods because those are foundational methods that we just have not taught the world. Okay, we've, we've made a choice not to ta ta teach the world that and a lot on the flag, which we have not shared much with anybody on the flag. We've given them things, and they, they go out and claim things, but they don't have the authorization for foundation. These are more authorizations for foundations here. But I'm maintaining the rules of the continuance of evidence as a survivor with, with a, a postal union member or owner, co-owner, who's now dead on the 45th day. It's now transshipped over to me. And Gordon Hyphen, James Colin Gunch, which we will get into at a later date here or in a later time, he, he stood himself down. Uh, he, he had to because he was a man of, of the honor. He lived within and complied with the performance. So we're going to take a look at that. Just keep that in the back of your minds here. Uh, we have a sea treaty of sea pass, and we have a Title 10, Section uh, 7, 7292, Subsection B, which dealt with uh, location, comp comply with the vessels. Uh, this is Title 10, this is military because commerce is war. So we're, we're always addressing that, or I am anyways, as we move forward in, in our commercial ventures here. Uh, with this call, and we call the meeting to order. Calling the shareholders meeting with this call by these board members. 
and, and, and that's, our, that's who we are. So. And then we endorse the back of the, that page. So let me, uh, I'm going to minimize out of here, guys. Just bear with me. That was that one. So now we're on to that one. Oh. 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 OK, I'm going to minimize big, minimize small. We're going to work through the, a couple of these things here. This is just a foundational thing. On, on the shareholders meeting of the Postal Union and, the, and leading into the copyrights and what we set up. Uh, I'm giving publication to the world now because I, it's my duty for the performance of that closure under survivorship with Dave passing and Gordon standing down on uh, June 6, 2006. He stood himself down and he cried that day, but we'll get into that a little later. First thing, when we were out on a vessel, what do you do? You take the oath because if you don't take the oath, you can't participate. So the first thing we do in the first paragraph, too, is uh, here's the dates of the shareholders meeting. July, it was in 2003, July 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th. We sat around for those days and we had a discussion on what's relevant. How can we make this thing move forward? How, what happens if? What, and, and these are the contingencies that we came up with collectively and then made a vote and a ruling on it, and we complied with the terms of those contracts for the performance of the quantum grammar construct that we were giving to the world. So these are, these are the dates of the shareholders meeting. Uh, and, and we're giving closure under Title 46, Section 314. So when that, what that means is Title 46, 314 deals with customs and policies to move in and out of ports, like courthouses, courtrooms, customs, anything to do with banking. So we've given closure to that manifest that these are, these are the rules that the, the shareholders and the tenants, all of you, are going to comply with. And that's why that, was, that title site was put in there. So that's the closure on that. The, second, the third paragraph deals with what are we claiming? Well, we have the copyrights to the Title IV 1 to 1.9 dimension flag. You all know it as the correct communication parse syntax grammar flag, performance grammar flag. That is that, but the foundation of where the nativity comes from was the Title IV 1 to 1.9 dimension flag, which David and I filed copyrights on on August 12th, 1999, at the United Nations. And it's chronicled in the congressional record uh, in the fiction world. The they mirrored everything that David and I had done. So that's do your own due diligence on that, please. And the Title IV would be with this levy treaty for this performance here. So the Title IV flag, 1 to 1.9 dimension flag, which is here, which is on my oath, filed down at the federal courthouse right here. I've paid the filing fee, $46, there's the receipt, to be a federal judge in this territory of the Nevada. So all this is in compliance for Joinder for me to be here and hold this trial right now for those who showed up for those that are listening, because now you're getting the necessary closure before you open your mouth and make, make comments, you better have your ducks in a row. If not, the fiction world will not honor you, because they, there can only be one. And we're at Title 4, 1 to 1.9 dimension flag. Well, the first thing we looked at here, uh, we called the minutes to order with the claims of these minutes, with the bills of the lightings, with this Global Postal Union Board and shareholders meeting, with this dry dock the, the treaty number. And the dry dock treaty number that we used was my mailing number, which is here. RR2945682221 US. You notice I am the shipper and I am the receiver in Washington, DC. That's my number. Those that are in participation with the usury of the number, if my autograph and thumbprint are not on your contracts, you have no capacity to use this number. That's my number. Shipper means I'm the owner. And since David has passed, his hereditament to give you thiefment to use that is no longer. And you've all been given closure under a 45-day trust moratorium, and I've maintained the rules of the continuance of the evidence. Any outside party who is actively using any contract with RR 
294-568-221 US. That contract is null and void. In paragraph four, when we call the minutes to order, we do it under the bills of the lading. Back to Title 46, Section 190, 191, 193, and 194. This is a foundational function under bills of the ladings for proof of evidence of navigation of manifests. Um, I suggest all of you, since uh, David has now passed, um, take, take a, re a new look at that, okay? Because that, that's going to give you a lot of closure on a lot of your questions on shipping and, 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 the, and the proof of the service. This is a good foundational position to start and learn from, which a lot of people have, have not been led to. We, we, we kind of stepped away from that because uh, he want, David wanted to make all of you the student. And uh, to me, it's about, I don't care about being a master of anything. I'm a master of myself. It's up to you to manage your own lives. You are not my students, number one. Well, you think about the word student. When you're a student and you go to the universities, do you get paid? You're not my students. Now, if you want to be Dave's students, you can sit there and be Dave's students. But Dave's no longer. So you can't even claim that anymore. We're going to change the psychology of how we're thinking for our collection because as a student, that's why he called everybody the student, you can't be paid. That's got to change. That's got to change. Okay. So, enough about that. Uh, here we go. So what are we claiming on our voyage? Well, what are our prizes? Our prizes are the math communications with the the math certifications with the communications. Now let's think about that statement here. The math certifications. When you look at the functions of what David has created and what David gave to the world, the 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1. These are the math certifications on communications. This is what I have the, 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 the position on. right? Gordon did no longer because he stood down on uh, June 6, uh, 2006. So and we are, at the time, scribes was me and David uh, dealing with that. We're not using that here. We're, and we're, this is what? For this ratifying treaty on this date. So we ratified the treaty on the date which was filed at the Secretary of the Navy's office and the Secretary of Defense's office and at the Pentagon. So we're, we, we've ratified, we've christened the vessel and we've ratified the treaty. So now it's just the performance of the levy which I am conveying. Uh, maybe it's jumped down too far. And then, of course, down here, a William Ball, Pentagon. This stuff is not relevant here. Basically, the Pentagon is fully up to speed through the Secretary of the Navy's office of these contracts. It's basically uh, in those paragraphs giving you closure on. What were the dates on the contract? Huh? What were the on the contract on that one was uh, uh, February 20th of 2003. Well, we were at the Secretary of the Navy's office in Washington, D.C. Um, at the Pentagon. Um, paragraph C deals with uh, uh, we're calling, we're, we're making this summons and we're making it known at the time we were in the unity states of our world corporation. We have since changed the unity states of our world corporation. When we were using unity states of our world corporation, the value that we were placing to unity was a fourfold characteristic of the time of the possession, of the ownership, and of the title of each thing that we were conveying on our contracts. Because UN was a negative word, we stepped away from that and called it document contract, hyphen contract, sorry, uh, world hyphen corporation. Document hyphen contract hyphen vessel hyphen world corporation is where we took that statement. But at the time, back in those days, we were learning too. But I'm a grandfather, and we have the, co I have the copyright, so we, we changed that. David changed that, and now we move forward here today. And this was all filed into evidence. Um, the, the U.S. judicial system here, and the U.S. Uh, not the U.S. Uh, in London, the uh, uh, International Maritime Organization, um, and in Bern, Switzerland, and at the Vatican, and at NATO, at the Pentagon, and all branches. They, are very, they, they have all these contracts, so they're, they're, they're aware of how the shareholder structure works. And believe me, 
I want to get into later stories about um, Gordon's standing down. He, he, the fiction morphed into what they did to him because of the position, because he, he could only function within the honor of what he did. Well, what, what we set up. Well, so what's the current name of the World Corporation? What did it document, document hyphen contract hyphen vessel hyphen world hyphen corporation. With, with punctuation. Thank you. Paragraph six. Okay, paragraph six dealt with um, David and I certifying in face-to-face -face meetings um, for um, the, the authorization for the use of the SEE treaty and the SEA pass through the Vatican, through the hieroglyphics that they were playing games with, which is in our everyday function of communication, from the spelling to, to, to all the games that they play there with their, with their, with their, with their ritualistic symbolism, uh, we took that capacity back from them. And so we, we certified it. Uh, at the Secretary of, of the State's office, um, Michael Sedano, Angelo Sedano, and the line, uh, they call him Angelo, but uh, Angelo Colin Sedano, and uh, we had um, 40 uh, cardinals, the top cardinals with us. Uh, they shut down St. Peter's. In fact, one of the pictures that you see with me in the yellow shirt, and it's kind of dark in there, that was right after that. I was kind of had a taken back look on my face, if you'll notice in the, in the, in the original film script here of what we did, we had just got done with the presentation of, of, of this statement. Physically, in um, um, at the Vatican, inside the, the, their, 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 their chamber, so to speak. But we come out of the tomb, because we're not in the catacombs, because we have our claims of the life. So those are some of the things that we did there. Uh, that's in paragraph six. Okay, so paragraph, so part of paragraph six deals with breaking bulk of these minutes. Breaking bulk is the actual levy treaty that I'm giving you in the closure now. Because I'm breaking bulk of the cargo of words so that the world can know what's going on. Very crucial in any contract that you, that you articulate that you break bulk, let your cargo out so that others can, can join or not join. So these are, these are very, very important tools. Okay, uh, now here we go. This uh, paragraph seven deals with the, the cumin in the uh, Masonic. So part of the studies with Dave, which was took us into a lot of plagiarism c constructs from the from the Freemasons. You got to remember they're they're not a very old organization here on this planet. So a lot of that stuff is just hoopla to, to give you some kind of social status. And when you go down and really break it down, it's not what it looks like. Anyway. Uh, uh, the, the, the cumanus, they call the decumanus, was the, the treasurer or the collector. That would be me. I'm, I'm, I'm a collector. So when you come with your judgments, I'm the guy for the collection. Now, uh, Monty Hyphen Edwin Colin Mueller, uh, and I'll let him give his testimony here in a bit, he will tell you his stories about yelling at Dave, why isn't Dave honoring this? Right? Because Monty knew this the truth. He knew he knew what was going on. And he's like, all the lawsuits need to be going through Russell. He's the collector by construct. Because we're looking at contract. We're always looking at contract. Right? So that's that's one of the things that's relevant here that people need to know that in order to go collect your contracts, they come through me. I say whether it's valid or not, based upon your performance. So you have to meet the twelve E seven through through twelve E one. And you have to show that you have certified authenticated knowledge of what that is. So I'm the collector for for the for the for these minutes. And for and for and with this call, this location, now time or space post and space postmasters, right? Because time was taken out. So we just use spatial, spatial hyphen, space hyphen postmasters. Not only postmaster in space, but you must have knowledge of what that is. Right? So you're moving thought process to create volition to comprehend. Uh, and come to join her with the concept of, of a space or of a thought. Okay, so okay, so in paragraph eight, here's where it gets interesting. So the prize of all this for the collectors is is dealing with 
this is more of uh, when we're dealing with energy movement. We're talking about vertebrae. So we're, we're talking about uh, controlling angles and shapes and movement of electron structures for synapses uh, through our mitochondria being the, the power source to create cellular activity. So we're breaking down the fundamental cognition of what initiates thought. So this is a very deep paragraph here, and I'm gonna, there'll be a lot of comments on this, I'm sure, when we put it up online, just in that paragraph alone. Uh, um, okay, so part of that conduct of how you, through your hypothalamus of us, and through our mitochondria, is creating our, our virilities, our generations after us. And that's what the energy movement was done with thought process, right? To create, you know, to go into find the right person and, and, and create another human being. Pro, they use procreate, uh, but it's, 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 it's the thought process of that. And we took accountability for that in our lives. Part of that because we, we were cognizant of what we were building and the dynamics that it would have on the earth. We, we, we knew that outside thinking would try to come in to our construct, because it was very small, our triangle there of three. And as the outside influence would come in, it would try to undermine the things that we gave for, for goodness. So from that, we created what's called the generation virilities, that our generations would function from there on out in correct sentence structure communication. And we all agreed to that. David went home, Gordon went home. I didn't have any kids, so I'm like, okay, I'll just sit back on this and, and wait till I have a child. And I've complied with those rules of having a child, right? And we've not entered into that world. So that the, Dave came back and said, my kids don't want to do this. My generations are out. The fiefment and the corporal hereditament of what I've built cannot go to them because they are not, at the time, they were not, and they still are not, um, that I know of. Uh, they did not comply with the sentence. Therefore, he could not pass the, the, what we built onto his, onto his family. Gordon, on the other hand, his family lived to it for three years. And they struggled with that because imagine you, you're having a, you're having a enter into a world out here and have to do it all in quantum grammar. Very, very difficult to do. It got to the point where they could, not, could, could no longer function within that time frame. And he signed off on this. Gordon stood himself down. And he cried. Literally cried. I said, and, I said, and I didn't comprehend the dynamics of that because I didn't have a child at the time. He had children. I understood what it now means that you have to let them go free. You know, like a loved one. Do they return? That sort of thing. And they so autographed off on this and then vacated as well and vanished from this lifestyle. Uh, when that happened, when I would later in life uh, marry and separate into a different condition of state, then the outside world now had free, free reign to, to attack Gordon for what he set up. He stood in the foxhole, but he decided to get out. And when he did that, they, 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 they trumped up stuff and, and they hammered him. And he couldn't go back to you. He had knowledge, but he couldn't have, use it. So he had to sit there and take it. Very unfortunate for him. But he was honorable. They did make no mistake about it. Gordon Hyde and James Golan Guns, when he was here and he performed, he lived to this. And he lived it until he could not. And then he vacated. David lived it, went home came back and said, no, my family, we're out. I said, all right, sounds good. So this, true, this, is, this is the forensics of that, under what's called, uh, for these generations of these varieties with the closure of these vessels, Gordon, David, and Russell, basically our virilities, when you get into the definitions, our virilities were to function from that day forward in correct communication partial syntax grammar. And they did not in those two. Gordon's did for three years, and Dave's never did. So he, 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 he was under trust for 45-day moratorium. Now he's no longer here. So his generations can't. In fact, his generations were 
given closure that this was going to happen. I mailed it to his location for his lineage. Here's the bill of the lading on that, and that was received uh, on the 21st. Yeah, the 21st of July. So they have knowledge of this. They just can't, they can't come because there, there's, a, there's a no performance here. So Jenner, Dave's family is, is no longer in the construct by Dave's performance. See, David authorized this, right? You have to understand what he's done. This is his minutes. This is his manifestation. This is his breaking bulk. Collectively, we did that. Okay, okay, and now once we did that, now the question is, why would you have this, this funeral and this public ceremony on this specific day, August 4th and 5th? David's last condition, David, David lived it out with volition. He never did anything by accident. Whether the thinking was there or not in the last year, because I had to stand down because I saw this thing coming and I conducted my court-martialing because, number one, I had the right to condu conduct a military court-martialing on David Eiffel and William Colin Miller for two reasons. Number one, he was in the military. He was discharged out of the military honorably. However, he never went back to the post office to vacate his registration number because he needed to stay in usury with the VA for the benefits. So he was still part of the construct when the construct ended for the post office. That's what gave me jurisdiction to court martial him. But he said he wasn't in the military. Well, I have paperwork from the U.S. Air Force. He said he was in the military. I asked him the questions. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not in the I don't know why he did that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure that that... I'm seeing paperwork from the U.S. Senators, and when you get a discharge, he was discharged honorably. He was in the U.S. In fact, you can go into the old uh, day videos, and you talk about being in the Air Force. Yeah, I know he told me that the VA benefits and everything. The VA, he was at the VA hospital. And yeah, yeah I, well, yeah, I, I'm just telling you how, yeah. how it works. You don't go to the VA hospital unless you've been in the military. That's just the realities of that. Yeah. And he was, he was losing his function to think. And that's why I did what I did, because I saw it coming. He, and this is the sad part. He wouldn't stop and correct on anything from a business structure. And it tra sadly transferred into his life. And he chose to eat at McDonald's. He chose to eat at some. He chose to, all this negativity. And I, I just, I, uh, it affected the thinking. And he's, actually, within that court martial, he was actually dead within a year. And it was sad. And it was sad. But this is business. It's so not about that and that my friendship with David. So, uh, so okay. So now, back to the date here. I'm doing this within, within the 45-day trust moratorium of him passing, because of this paragraph here. Turning the keys with the placement in the vertical now. So now we're we're taking David from a horizontal plane of 3D dimension here, and now he's vertical and he's in neutral, and therefore his the volition of his neutrality cannot be cannot be put back into this reality. So now he's 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 in, he's in, he's, in, he's static. The concept of what he has done is there, but the authorizations and the contracts that he's involved with, from his contracts with the Clintons, from his contracts with the Rothschilds, they're all null and void on this day, and they have no authorization to use. The grammar. Unless the what? They come through who? The collector. That's how that works. They're very aware of it. They're very cognizant. Well, wait a minute. I've had a lot of guys read this document from inside the government and come back and go, thank God. You got it. We understand. We're tracking it. We, we comprehend what you've done. You're correct. See, I know I'm correct. By contract. Right? By the performance. Well, what did Dave always talk about? Contract. It's always about the contract. Always about the contract. Here's the contract. Here's the performances. Here's the void performances. Being David's family, Gordon standing down, vacated, you know, all those mechanical things that you guys are now becoming knowledgeable of. David's family knew. The lineage knew. But the lineage is, is right here. 
and cannot enter in because they did not live and make the choice of the performance. And it was a difficult choice because there was a lot of consequences. I got, you know, you get the, it's not what that is, not very fun. So, yes. So now that his energy is, is in neutral, yes. um, is there at any point, and now that you've done this today, that means that no time in the future... No time in the future can he energy. come... Can anybody pick pick that energy and try to subvert it into what's being created? Because we want to use this for good. Yes. Now the choices of good are based upon the performance. What's really cool about the, the, the parse syntax grammar is when you look at the verb of thinking, you can always preposition the facts, which is what we're doing here. Now we can take a look at the condition of mind. Why did that person perform? Why did that person not perform? And then it's up to them, although in this specific case, David is no longer here, the world will judge this. The world will judge his performance. Because the world just simply doesn't know at this, as of this date. Because it hasn't had to know. We're not bashing David because the message is great. If the messenger couldn't perform, then we have to look at the volition. What's the condition of mind? Why did he? So we have a history here. I want to, I want to keep this in play now. Here's a history of David entering into contract and his generations not performing. Okay. So this is one we're going to look at a lot, and then the world is going to ask themselves, what was the condition of mind? So he broke the code. Well. He broke, he broke the authorization to transmit it to anyone else. Okay? And we're going to get into that next, flowing with the copyright releases, because I'm the only... I know what it took to get the copyright releases out of him. Right. And it was a very ugly day. And the FBI was there, and it was very physical, and it was very violent. So... Anyways, we're just we're, we're, we're gonna, we'll address that next. We're, we're we're doing one thing at a time because the world needs to know where they stand as tenants with the program, with what's been created, which they're all in tenancy of, which they're all trying to use numbers on. Doesn't work like that. And I set it up that way because I didn't want something like this to happen. I didn't want people using things without authorization because then you have to look at the condition of the mind. What's the condition of the mind? Be very careful. I had a judge in uh, 1997, and he's sitting across to Judge Donald Hall, uh, Fremont County Circuit Courts, Riverton, Wyoming. He's off the bench with me, and he's sitting, and he's got his robe off, and I'm breaking down my condition of the mind, because I can only testify about my performance and my condition of thinking as first-hand witness to the thought processes that I was conveying. He says, for you it works. He says, but be very careful what you wish for because you just might get it. See, because your thinking takes you into the manifestation. The prepositional phrase language positions the facts. Now we have to look at what was the condition of mind to create the facts. So now thinking can be put on trial. Well, that's good and bad. For those of us who want righteousness, who want honesty, who want fairness, who want rule one, rule equal, all the things that were taught within the construct, very wonderful concept. But for those of you who think that you're going to use grammar to not be take accountability for your thinking, the day of the collection is here. And there are people around the world very cognizant of this. Not the general public, but the people behind the banking and the, the, the real, the, the, where the action is. Okay, and then uh, we were breaking bulk of the minutes, and that's paragraph 8E. And I'm going to blow this up a little bit so you guys try to read it a little bit. But it's all on the paperwork that was sent out to everybody on their evidences and summons on the publication of the seminar. So everybody was given more than three-day notice and more than 21-day notice to, to make this, to be here. They've made a choice not to. And that's fine by me, but now they're getting correctness. So now all we have to look at is the, the, the condition of mind at a later date if people continue with their usury of the collection, of the levy.
Are there any questions so far? So the people that, the corporations that don't show up or send representatives are passed out? The, doesn't matter. They were given closure that this was going to happen. So they had, they had an opportunity to They had an state. opportunity to come here and, and look, look at the administrative contracts. Not of what they did. But about the, the, the 12B7 through 12B1, could they control that and show an authentication that they had a right for the statement of a claim? If they didn't object, then would they consent? Object is a no contract word. <laughs> contract is just performance. The world judges us by our performance and by the forensics and the legacy and the legend that you leave. The legend that you leave will either be in a performance or the, the, the hand script that you write down here, your contracts, your usury, from cradle to grave. So now we're taking a, a quantum look into the correct communication parsing syntax grammar of a function that was built for the world to use. And the world is getting the necessary closure that if they so choose to join with the construct, they can't. Because the first rule of contract, you must have knowledge and you must have full closure. Without that full closure, it's unfair to you to join with that contract. Yes? Okay. 9A. Okay, so in paragraph 9A, these were the percentage points that we that people were going to get within the construct within our shareholders. But under survivorship, this is not a relevant paragraph anymore for, for these individuals. B, B, Cheryl. A lot of this through paragraph 9A through our percentages. Okay, paragraph 9C and 10. 9C, dealing with the CFAS and C treaty, through the board and shareholders meetings with the call of the, of the now space postmasters, with the closure, we're getting closure by the postal union owners with the, with the United States of our world corporation. So that'd be 9C. Paragraph 10 deals with, this is a standing treaty. This is a treaty that's in drogue law. We, we put this into perpetual corporation so it could be used by those who join it. But they have to come through the correct channels, which we're going to get in a little later this afternoon on how to join it. Um, and that's with the meeting. So everything's under what we call drogue law with, with, and breaking bulk of, of the shareholders' meeting. So it's a standing treaty. This was put into play so that we couldn't get out of it. Accountability. Paragraph 11. Oh, this just gives the drogue, oh, drogue law date. Oh, this dealt, with, this dealt with an issue. This dealt with another issue. Paragraph 11, paragraph 12. Yeah, paragraph 11 or 12 dealt with another situation. A situation, yeah, it's relevant I bring it up a little bit. Because of the criteria of where people are seeing now within the program. <laughs> Can't even believe I'm telling this story. Okay, paragraph 11 dealt with a, uh, back when we were, David and I, and we were working with another person that, had knowledge to a point by me and was David's other st student and she also was a federal postal judge. Her name was Janice K. Colon Logan. Janice K. Colon Logan was a lady with tenacity and she believed Dave. I didn't meet Janice until after she had been authorized by Dave to go function and do these court things. 
Well, we're looking at a judicial history here. Okay, so we're, we're looking at, there's not only Leighton Colin Ward, Mark Hyphen, Krishan Colin, Christopher, there's not only these people out here, but there's a history of the past, which is very relevant to today, because we're looking at judicial history. Janice was involved in, in cases where she was under the concept that David had her back. When you claim to be a federal judge, you must authenticate 12B7 through 12B1 on every criteria. The fiction is there functioning as gatekeepers to make sure that you know what you're saying. Janice could not authenticate certain things. She felt hung out to dry by David in the courtrooms. And she got hammered. Uh, 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 some of the things that we're seeing today would be like uh, Leighton Colin Ward, another guy, spun up by Dave, turned loose, just does not have the capacity to be doing what he's doing. Mark Sean, another guy, out there, real good people, just don't con, con you know, don't understand the concept of it. So this was an attempt by our shareholders meeting to give closure to the situation that Janice was in. And uh, she, went to, she went away for three years. She went to jail for three years, very seriously. When you go in there to make these claims, there's a, there's, a, there's a good reason why I can walk into the federal courthouses and get them to give me federal judges oaths and pick my filing fee, right? It's because I can prove it. I can authenticate the performance. I have a history of my story of what I've done. David, too, has a my story. This is you guys finding out about his story. You call it history. So Janice Eiffel and Kate Colin Logan was someone that was also spun and did quite a bit number of years in jail. And she, to this day, will not talk to David. She cries when she sees me, and she's my friend. She says, I didn't know. How did you know all these things? And I cried because she was my friend. And I... Hug little Janice. And uh, I told her, I figured it out. How did you do that? And I told her, she goes, that's not possible. I says, well, the timing was right. The spirit was right. The condition of mind was right. All the humbleness and humility it takes to make that walk and that journey with all the stones being thrown at you. Instead of throwing stones at other people, you judge yourself. You perform for yourself. This is about you controlling your own worlds, not me controlling your worlds. You come to me simply as a function, and I'm here as a facilitator and a function. But you are in control of your worlds. You use the verb of thinking. You use the performance on that, not me. So we're looking just at the performance here of David. In this specific case, the reason why I tell the story of Janice Hyphen and Kegel and Logan, because there's several others out here now that will get the same treatment. Because they are not in a position. They're tenants. They're not authors. They have no authenticity. Because they, they, they have not shown authorizations, credentialing, to make the statements. Some of you know who I'm talking about. Some of you may be watching this at a later 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 date here. So anyway. Janice Hyphen Gay Colin Logan, my friend. Legitimately. Someone that, man, she was tough. She couldn't take the beatings. She couldn't take the hazing. They were rough and violent with her. Physically rough. This is what it takes to get through the gatekeepers. And I've seen no one step up other than one other judge, a little 16-year-old. He's 20. No, he's 30 now. A 30-year-old now. Federal hyphen judge, colon, Stephen hyphen Alvin, colon, the second, colon, Roebuck, who's walked away from the program. Man is a man of his word, and he's a man of the highest honor. At 15, 16 years old, he walked through 23 state and federal court judges. They threw him in a federal penitentiary and told him they were going to sodomize him if he wouldn't put down his contracts. He backed his ass up to the door, pardon my language. He says, bring it on. I'll never surrender. 
We let him out. Stephen Hyphen Album Colon, the second Colon Robot, if you're listening, for the thanks, for your courage, for your honor, for your trust, and for your many joys in your new life. Blessings. Paragraph 13. Paragraph 13 is a publication of, see, back in the day, you see how far we were in technology? We were bumping paragraphs to different pages. So you, know, you can see how far this has progressed for those of, you know, that, are, that are new and have seen through the years. Uh, uh, doing a, a shareholders meeting to uh, claim of the minutes with the closure of this publication. of the vessel name and sea pass with the United States of Oil Corporation, closure end. And then it goes into the articles of the Constitution and the word definitions. I'm just kind of glancing through here to see if any definitions are relevant. Oh, these are the people that have this document. This is at the Navy, the White House, the Coast Guard Warehouse in, in Kern, Kearneysville, West Virginia, the, the Vatican, the United Nations, the countries of the United States, France, foreign corporations, of course, at the United Nations, Russia, Japan, China, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Sol Solomon Islands, Israel, the U.S. Postal Service, and the International Monetary Fund all have this contract. These are countries and locations that have these contracts. There's other, a lot of other nations at the United Nations. There's actually 82 of them. This is just a cliff note of some of them. They're all very aware of how the shareholders meeting worked and the functions behind that. Um, elected, uh, so in the definitions you have the, uh, pardon me. <laughs> you have the uh, uh, humanists, the, the tax collectors, uh, Q, cloud, C, vertebrae, how this all works in the Masonic worlds for the collection of the fees. There are certain ceremonies for that. I'm not going to get in to discuss that right now. That's at a different seminar, different techniques, different things on that. So. Um, electros, energy, generations, things that you create, your hypothalamus, your bodily functions, and the levy treaty right at the beginning, the levy, levy treaty for the collection of the value with the service of the position. Well, there's value in what I'm giving the world, because you're getting closure, and I'm just the performer for the collection of the service. Uh, wharf, marine contract, maritime liens, there's, there's liens that have been filed upon us by us to collect, minutes, notary, the prize, shareholders, the meaning of shareholders. So meaning of shareholders for the board of this authorization is with the log of the corporation, with the journal by the parties. Synapses, dealing with the, with the methods of, of pulse through your neurotransmitters. It's all built into here through our thinking to create our generations. Gordon's generations honored for a while, then they stood out so that their energy is no longer. Dave's family never had any neurotransmission. There was a spark, but it, they didn't transfer over because they didn't live it and perform it. So there's no neurotransmitting thinking coming from Dave's lineage in correct communication, partially syntax grammar, or his family. Sorry. Um, vertebrae, vertical, virilities. These are all the things. And then the definitions to Title IV. We don't do this as much as we used to. We have all the definitions for Title IV, Sections 1, 2, and 3. It's all built into the construct. And then at the very end, you have the, uh, the authorizations of all the shareholders. More touch Title X ship naming for christening, the date, and then the, the, the thumbprints and fingerprints of Gordon, David, and me. Uh, 
Yeah, there's Dave's house, 5166, Colon North 63rd Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's no longer going to be relevant here. So all mail going to location 5166, North 63rd Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That in the correct communication parsing sentence grammar, that ends. Are there any questions? Are you guys learning anything about our construct? A lot of closure here for you guys. That's what this was called for. Within the 45-day trust moratorium to maintain the rules of the continuance of the evidence. Um, I think it's a good time to break for lunch now. And uh, we're only halfway through this thing. We got lease contracts next, and uh, we kind of get into more of the corporate structure. I'm going to go back and think, keep in mind about the judicial history. Remember the performance or non-performance of his family. Remember the performance and the things with the, you guys learned about federal hyphen judge or former federal hyphen judge Colin Janice hyphen K Colin Logan. And we're just we're just we're just bringing stories to you so you can figure out. You guys are going to be the judges, not me, because Dave's no longer here to ask the questions. So you guys are going to, the world's going to have to judge this, and the forensics, and, and, and what it comes up with. The message is good. The 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1. The functions are good. Now we need to look at the condition of thinking. We're going to learn how to use that today. So it's going to be really a, a cool seminar. Thank you, guys. Enjoy your lunch.